why people love business, why people that are in business like you love it because of the and they, creativity. And they need of some it. experience in college. They don't need to wait till they go out on their first interview because you know I went to work for Oil and Bank because I just I couldn't find a job and I only worked there. I walked down to the unemployment bureau and said, "Do you can you find me a job?" And they found me a job with Dupont. And so my first call at 22 years old, I called on a guy named Sam Walton. And I always say adoption number one, meeting Sam Walton number two, Sam Walton number two, when I was a very young person, he was my first uh, first call I made. And this, this is a good story. I walked in to see him. Of course, he was right there in the store, you know. And uh, I said, he said, who are, you know, who are you and what do you have? And I said, I've got Lucite paint. He said, oh, my goodness, we'd love to have a brand name. And I said, well, you know, I'd like to sell you 300 gallons. And he said, how much is it? And I said, $1,500. And he said, no, I'm not paying $1,500. So we talked a little bit. And he said, come on, go to the, I think it was the Lions Club. So he takes me as a young kid, and I guess he was 38 or 40. So we go to this luncheon. He's passing yellow pads back and forth to me. And he goes, I don't want 300 gallons, I want 50 gallons. And I said, I'll lose the only other customer DuPont has in Harrison if, if you buy it. So anyway, after much arguing, I went to a pay phone because we didn't have mobile phones then. And uh, I got him 120 days dating. I pushed it across the table on the yellow pad. And he said, what does that mean? And I said, it means you don't have to pay for it for four months. So I finally got an order. $1,500? $1,500. And I Spaced so I started, out over four months. That, that was, uh, he didn't have to pay for it. So, you know, it was sold. And people don't realize that Walmart was begging for merchandise in those days. But the factories, you know, he sent me. So anyway, to make a long story short, after about six months, he said, I want you to quit DuPont. I want you to become a manufacturer's rep. And I said, I don't know what that is. He said, well, you'll go to work on a commission and just go ask people to sell their products. So I said, where would I go? And he said, Chicago. And I said, how did I get there? And he said, you get on a train in Memphis that stops in St. Louis. And so I got off in Chicago, but he forgot to tell me to wear a coat. And it was about 30 <laughs> below on the lake. So my contacts stuck to my eyeballs, and I knew I was in Chicago. So I went to a place called the Navy Pier, which had all the merchandise. It's, it's a famous tourist place now, but it used to be a merchandising mart. And I walked up to everybody and said, I'm Frank Fletcher. I'd like to represent your company. And I came home with about 50 companies of junk, you know. But anyway, I started calling on all the Walmart stores. You sold each store individually and by that time he had opened 15 or 20 so that was the start of my so wait he he he, he, he hires you away from DuPont. he pried me away from dupont he, he makes you a, a rep for him i left my 600 hundred dollar salary which i was very proud of that's right and now i wasn't working for walmart i was working and that was 600 for a month company. let's just say that was yeah, 600, 600 a, month. a month so i went to work for companies that paid me a commission only if i sold something so no salary i gotcha so so uh so anyway, you But you're, I thought you said when he hired you away, you became a sales rep for... No, not for Walmart. Oh. For I was a manufacturer, what, what they call a manufacturer's rep, which means we represented different companies. Like if you had a company and I was selling your flags, so you'd pay had, me a commission if I sold one. If, if I didn't sell anything, I was of no cost to you. You're kind of like a buyer for him. No, you, not really. Just, just I was just one of many, many salesman calling on walmart selling products except that i didn't work for one company i worked for multiple companies did you get to keep your dupont job no, no. you had to completely give up your six hundred dollars you had to and, take uh, this big risk yeah, so of that, going was, out. that was a first big risk and uh, there are not manufacturer reps like that anymore oh well there are a few of them but not not many but it's it's a commission job and mm -hmm. that's i always love commission and today everyone that works for me I, I pay very low salaries and high commissions because I think that if you can reach for the stars, no one needs to put a cap on what you can make. Uh, so, so even like people that are managers at my restaurant, for instance, we give them goals to hit. If they hit those goals, they keep making more and more bonuses. So you know what? They don't close at 10 o'clock when the door says 10 o'clock. They stay open till 11 o'clock. But it's just I've always believed Smart. in never telling someone this is your salary and this is all you can make. I always say, make as much as you want, as hard as you want to work. And so that, you know, has always been good for me. And then, uh, Kerry, Mr. Walton fired me when I was about 28. He called me and he said, Frank, come in my office. And I said, well, sir, what's wrong? He said, well, there's nothing wrong with you. We're going to get rid of all the manufacturer's reps. But you didn't work for him. No, but he, when he said fire me, that, that is kind of confusing. 
He said, you're no longer going to have a job. Walmart is going to contact all the companies that you and all the other people represent. And we're going to tell those companies we want them to give us your commission. In other words, if I was selling it to him for a dollar, he would get them to sell it to him for 95 cents, you see, and, Mm -hmm. and Frank would lose out. So I said, well, Mr. Walton, I got two kids and a wife, and I've been working, you know, for a long time for you. At your stores, and he said, "You got paid for every day, son." He was he was real nice. I said, "I'm thinking about suicide." And he said, "Well, go out in the front <laughs> lobby. Don't do it here in my office." <laughs> and I said, "You know, it's not really funny." <laughs> so anyway, he said, "Go home and rent a garage and uh, make something. And I'll try to buy it from you." And I said, "Mr. Walton, I can barely turn the key in my car. I'm not very inclined." So uh, I did. I went home and rented a garage, and and that's the birth of Cheyenne which was a lamp company. All, we didn't make anything. We just assembled parts. We bought parts, and we actually made shades. So you know something about sewing. We bought sewing machines, and we sewed our own shades. But we bought all the parts from all over, and we assembled them. And so we started, and Mr. Walton bought the lamps. And when other people would leave Walmart and go to Target, I'd follow them to Target. When they went to Kmart, I followed them there. When we went to Lowe's or Home Depot, I followed people that left Walmart all over the United States. So I broadened my territory from Arkansas to the USA. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot of great stories. So it sounds like when Sam Walton pulled the rug out from under you uh, that he also funded your venture. He said he would buy from you, but I think he maybe bought parts for you, too. No, he he uh, he just told me if I made something good and if it was for the right price, he would buy, and I knew what the right price was. But he did he did he did help us, you know, by buying our merchandise. And uh, why did you pick? Well, I was one of the pick? companies. That's a good question. One of the companies I represented was a company called Jim Co. Lamps in in Jonesboro, and so I knew about lamps, and I had sold them for a long, long time. So I was really had a big business with with that company, and. Uh, I actually went to the owner of that company and asked him if I could make some different kind of product than he made. And uh, uh, he agreed. And any, anyway, that was why I started in the lamp business. And then uh, he agreed. So he, he supplied agreed. You parts? I, kept, I kept selling his product for a while and I made different kinds of lamps. But eventually my business started growing good. So I had to resign from his business. But uh, I had sold Mr. Walton so many different products over the period of years. And, you know, one of the funny things was uh, that I uh, I taught myself how to ad- to make up ads. Back in these days, we're talking a long time ago, They were Walmart was advertising in newspapers. So I went to a newspaper and said, teach me how to lay out an ad. And they said, okay, if you look at a newspaper, the customer buys or the customer reads from the top left. So whenever you put an ad in, so if you open up a newspaper like this, he said, you want your products in the top left. Oh, I always thought it was the top so, right. No, it's the top left. Oh, darn. So I, uh, I, I would learn how to cut and paste all the products that I had. I would make up an ad, put the Walmart bro- uh, logo on top, and I would cut all my products and put them in the top. And then I would put other products that Walmart had, and I would hand the manager uh, a makeup of an ad. And they loved it because they didn't have to do it. And guess what? My stuff was always on the top. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you one funny story about Mr. Walton and pricing. When I first sold him the paint, he said, okay, I didn't want to buy that much, but how much did the, the Lucite paint cost? And I said, it cost $3.70. He said, what are we going to sell it for? And I said, three ninety seven. And he looked at me like I was crazy. Yeah. He, went, he said, uh, son, we can't make any money. I said, Mr. Sam, please. Let me ask you about your toothpaste. What do you sell your toothpaste for? And he said, what's that got to do with the paint? And I said, you sell your toothpaste for less than you pay for it. You know why? Because you want to drive everybody in the health beauty aids, and then they buy all kinds of other stuff. I'm going to make your paint department famous, and then they're going to buy paint brushes, paint and roller sets, and you're going to have the best paint department in the world. Lost leader. He went, okay. So uh, one of the the stories in sales is the the least amount you can – sell your product for the faster it'll sell. In other words, instead of if it was a three ninety seven it was gonna sell a lot faster than if it was five ninety seven. But I've known people to make prices so low they run themselves out of business. Well he wasn't gonna run himself out of business and all I was doing was, was learning from what he had done when he started was the health and mediates for his first big loss leader. So 
I would just work. I, I would always try to get him to promote my products. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll tell you a funny story about Mr. Walton. I mean, I could just write a book. He called me one morning about 6.30, and I woke up, and he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm asleep. Who is this? And he said, it's Sam Walton, and it scared me. And I said, where are you, Mr. Walton? He said, I'm in Dalton, Alabama. I said, sir, the stores are not open. At, he said, I got a key in the guard. And he said, don't ask me about where I am. I'm going to pick your item for my my item for a year's contest. So he picked an item, he told me, and I just got real quiet. And he said, what's wrong? I said, how do I tell you, sir, that's the wrong item? He said, how could it be the wrong item? I picked it. And I said, well, you saw it in Sam's Wholesale, and they work on a 10% markup. You're going to put it in Walmart, and they work on 35% markup. Once we go past the Sam's retail, it's not going to sell millions of dollars that you want it to. He said, okay, pick out another item. So I got to choose an item. And um, anyway, so that was that was long after you had started your business because Sam's Club. Yeah, this is many years later, but just the interaction with him, he he would just so much detail. You know, he asked me to meet him at a tennis court one morning at six o'clock in Dallas, six a.m., and he he wanted me to talk to him about a promotion, and he was constantly, you know, meeting with individual people. It's hard to think back then when you think of what a giant corporation it is now. Yeah, yeah. and he was just He's always so thinking. so detailed, always, how can we sell more? How can we sell more? And just uh, and a close relationship with everybody, it sounds like. So you picked Cheyenne Silverstone Manufacturing. How did you come up with that name? Well, silver is actually silver wood. We live on 808 Silverwood, so being a smart guy like I was, I looked at the signpost and said, I need a name for a mirror company. Cheyenne, I just always had a fascination about Indians, so anyway, that's that's kind of crazy, but that's how I picked that name. <laughs> but yeah, I picked Silverwood because I could see the sign. And uh, so, so you put them together. Yeah, no. Well, I had one company that came after the other. Silverwood was a company where we we uh, made mirrors. We we had an actual mirror machine as long as a football field, and you put glass on it. When it came out at the other end, a hundred yards long, it was mirrors. So it was two different companies, the lamps first and then the mirrors. How long did you do lamps before they were Oh, off? probably five or ten years. I don't know, a long And then time. when did you add the mirrors? And then the mirrors. And then we sold them all as, as one company when we, when we. How long did you work out of your garage in your home? Oh, maybe a year. And uh, I still work today. I work my office in my home. I don't have a garage anymore. But uh, I still, every morning I go downstairs and I have five other people that join me, my son. Being one, he's in business for me in the car business, and we have three other people that support us every day. So you like don't go to sons. an office, yeah, just like my so, sons. So so I don't go to some big building. I go I go one flight down and 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 rocket number three. I have a third dog now. They all look like all German shepherds. So rocket number three is sitting there by my desk waiting for the day to start. You don't feel like you need to get up and go to the office. I feel no, like I have know, to well, get up I and go wear, to the office. I can wear. Pajamas. Shorts or whatever I want to downstairs, <laughs> you know. And I don't have to put on a tie to go down. Do you have people come see you? Do you ask invite people? Yes, over? absolutely. Absolutely. We we have we have our uh I just it's always been that way, so I guess I'm just comfortable. Mm-hmm. And uh, You started that way, so you stayed that way. Yeah, so, so now now we're just in you know, we've moved on. We're only in the uh, hotel and the restaurants and the but the car business is our main deal, but I got to tell you the way I, what made me stop being in the lamp business for 30, I don't know how many years, 30 years. I don't know how long I called on Walmart forever. And one day I walked in and this new buyer said, I don't like anything you have. I want to show you some pictures in the magazine. And she was 25 years old and uh, she showed me pictures. And I said, that, that doesn't sell in Walmart. And she said, I'm the buyer and you're the seller. Be quiet. So, I said, have you ever been to Poto, Oklahoma? And she said, what's that got to do with this conversation? I said, well, you can't sell chrome in Poto. And I said, you can't sell brass in Florida because it the salt water. Right. And so she looked at me and she said, you and I are not going to get along very well. You're going to sell me what I want. So I did. But I wrote her a letter and I wrote the merchandise manager's letter and said, I'm not standing behind these products. I do not believe in them. They're not the right thing. How did it and work she out? bought them anyway. And then uh, she got fired. And six months later, another lady called me and said, hey, I don't like these lamps we have. And I said, you and I are going to get along beautifully. She said, great. She said, I want you to take back about $3 million worth. And I went up to Walmart and showed her the letter. 
and the merchandise managers and the vice presidents supported me and I didn't have to take them back but that was when I decided it was time for me to retire. 